Hey, it's your friend Choice CJ here, and welcome to my Week 5 battle for P4G Next Generation. We are going up against Carson Gaming, coach of the Chicago Bewares. Make sure to check him out. He's in a bunch of good leagues. He's in B uh, PPL D2, amongst others, and uh, just seems like an all-around fun, goofy guy, and uh, those types of people in the community are few and far between. Uh, a lot of people tend to take this sort of stuff very seriously, so it's nice to see someone who... Uh, is, you know, very good at the game, but knows how to have a good time, too. Um, this is my first video that's going up since my, uh, vacation to New Orleans, and I've also relocated. I've moved to a new apartment, and there's a little bit more, uh, detail about that in my video that's going up tomorrow for UBC, so I won't dwell on that now. I'll just go through this as quickly as I can, because we are going to be smushing this into the same video as the battle and without fail as soon as I start recording the train starts coming so hopefully you guys can hear that um, but you're gonna be able to see Carson has a team of Zygar 50% Ferrothorn, Primarina, Tornadus Incarnate, Araquanid, Rotom, Kangaskhan, me that's Mega Kangaskhan mind you, Superior, uh, Delphox, Sneasel, and Bronzong so his team is very very scary uh, Zygarde by itself is just so hard to deal with He's got a lot of incredible wall breakers like Pre-Marina, Superior, uh, Araquanid with Sticky Webs could be extremely annoying. Kangaskhan is incredibly difficult to switch into. Um, but I decided to gotta go with a pretty offensive approach this week. I don't have very many good switch ins to a lot of his bonds this week, but hopefully I can just overwhelm him with speed and power. And uh, we'll see if that strategy works this week. Uh, my first mon is a. Uh, Physically defensive chestnut. This is my primary response to Zygarde. I didn't want to go 100% offense, but we were still pretty offensive this week. Um, this is also a decent switch in to uh, things like Ferrothorn. It can switch into Kang if I need. Um, we do a spiky shield to damage that thing as it goes for a return or power up punch or whatever. A Leech Seed is here for uh, recovery. I am running rain this week, so I can't really run synthesis. And this also combos well with spiky shield. Hammer Arm with 36 attack EVs allows me to break a substitute on Zygarde 100% of the time, and then C-Bomb is there to hit things like Primarina and uh, Rotom if needed. This is a very nice switch into Rotom because I do have Bulletproof. Uh, I think Rotom gets Shadow Ball, right? Or does it only get Hex? I'm not, I'm not positive. No, it gets Shadow Ball. So if you run Shadow Ball, I can switch in and be immune, which is really nice. And then, uh, yeah, just mostly into defense, a little bit of speed for an uninvested Primarina, um, you know, if it's creeping a little bit. Next, we've got a Helmet uh, Iron Barb's Token Amaru, and this is really nice because uh, this allows me to do pretty tremendous damage to Kangaskhan if it goes for any sort of physical attacking move. And so we have that Spiky Shield uh, to potentially combo with Wish if we need, or to just get extra damage off on something like that Kangaskhan. Nuzzle is there for uh, Paralysis. And then building this team, I realized that I pretty much auto-lose to something like Scarf Torn or Scarf Superior. So I can switch into a tomorrow on those two mons, uh, live uh, two hits, and go for a nuzzle, and then paralyze uh, whatever that thing is, and I should be able to revenge kill it fairly easily from there. Um, and then Zing Zap is just my best way of doing damage, it's super effective, versus um, the, what do you call it, the uh, most of his mons. Actually, I'm going to switch this to Iron Head, uh, because this allows me to at least hit Superior neutrally. And it still hits the uh, Torn and the Primarina neutrally, so that's nice. And yeah, we have enough speed on here for max speed Primarina. The rest we put into mixed defense. No big deal. Um, we have an Expert Belt Coco this week. Uh, T-Bolt, Dazzling Gleam, Hidden Power Fire, U-Turn. Pretty standard set. Nice pivot. Can uh, revenge kill a lot of the stuff on his team, uh, which is great. Um, I think actually I need to put a four extra, uh, put one extra thing into here. This is uh, going to be allow us to outspeed Sneasel which is really nice, and uh, yeah, anything that I didn't need into my other EV stats, I just put into HP, so you know the drill with Coco. Next, we have a Scarf Pelipper. I really wanted to bring Damp Rock this week because I thought that would be nice to benefit my Rain Sweepers, but Scarf is really nice on its own because it can uh, catch a lot of his mons off guard. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of great flying switch-ins. Like, I guess just Rotom is his only ice switch-in, really, um, so that's pretty nice. Nice, uh, flying. Otherwise, he's got what, like, uh, 
Bronzong, which, yeah, I guess that's a pretty fair switch in, but if I go for the U-turn anticipating that, I can easily switch into one of my other mons and, and do pretty tremendous damage. I have Defog on this thing because my, strate my strategy auto-loses to Sticky Web, so I need this uh, just in case in order to get that Defog off on the Araquanid. And yeah, this speed allows us to outspeed Sneasel with our Scarf, so that's very nice. Next, we have a Life Orb Armaldo, uh, Rocks, Stone Edge, X Scissor Superpower. I really wanted to uh, put Sword Stance on this thing because a Sword Stance uh, Armaldo really puts in work versus his team. But I'm not running uh, Damp Rock, so I would only have a limited number of rain turns uh, at plus two. And I really needed rocks on the team, and so Armaldo made, kind of made the most sense to to have with rocks. Uh, this speed investment allows us to outspeed Sneasel, fastest member of his team without a scarf. And then last but not least, we have Seismitoad with Poison Jab, Knock Off, Ice Punch, and Drain Punch. Uh, I think actually I decided, do I want Drain Punch or do I just want like Earthquake? Um, I guess Earthquake doesn't really hit anything. Uh, Drain Punch hits Ferrothorn and uh, Kang super effectively and gives me some HP recovery. It has the same attack, like the same uh, base damage as Earthquake because Earthquake is obviously Stab. But um, at least Drain Punch gives me a little recovery, which is nice. And I have things like Knock Off to hit the Delphox and, um, and other mons like that. So yeah, I'm going to stick with the Drain Punch. <laughs> as you guys can probably see, I haven't spent a lot of time uh, thinking about this build. Uh, things have just been crazy for me. Uh, but yeah, this Mon is nice uh, versus him. Uh, Ice Punch does do about 94% to a Zygarde if it doesn't have any investment. And we are guaranteed to outspeed a plus one Zygarde with this investment. Um, so we can, if we can get up the rain, we can uh, potentially fire off an Ice Beam with Pelipper. But if not, we'll at least set it up so that Seismitoad can uh, punch that thing really hard. And I do still have my chest not to switch in if needed. So anyway, uh, that was the team. Let's hop on into the battle. Okay, here we are in the battle versus Carson. He has brought Zygarde, Tornadus, Mega Kangaskhan, Bronzong, Sneasel, and Rotom. So, no Superior, which is really nice. I think a Scar Scarf set could have been very scary. And then also no Primarina, which is a big relief. Uh, was there anything else that I was really uh, glad not to see? Uh, no, that was those are kind of the biggest threats I was worried about. No Ferrothorn, which is pretty good. Um, I wonder if this is a Roselli Berry Zygarde, because he doesn't have Type of Coco responses otherwise. I guess he's got good, maybe like AV Rotom or something like that. So that could be cheeky. Uh, in terms of leads, um, I guess a Bronzong lead is fairly likely. Like if I guess that's his most likely, or or the Rotom. Um, and so, versus both of those things, uh, what do I want to lead with? I don't know. I mean, the lazy lead is to lead Coco. Um, that's pretty good versus pretty much everything, except for like a Scarf Torn. So, let's just do that, and uh, we'll be pretty happy if that works. Huh. Alright, we got our good buddy Ultra Player in here. What's up, Ultra Player? Let's say... Sub Ultra Player. Um, Alright, so he does lead the Rotom. And so, is there anything that this Mon gets that really scares Tapu Koko? Hard to say. Uh, let's do a quick search on Smogon. Rotom. I don't think it gets any poison moves. Uh, other than, like, Hidden Power Poison. And if it does have Hidden Power Poison, how much is it going to do to me? Uh, let's see, uh, Rotom, let's make it a little 50, Hidden Power, Poison, doesn't do that much, so I think it's worth it just to stay in and, uh, click U-turn. I guess the question is, what am I going to go into? I guess Chestnut is my play, if he chooses to stay in. Uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking, so let's see, so... 12% uh, damage. He seems to have a little bit of HP investment. Hard to say exactly how much. 252. So it might be max HP with Assault Vest. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think Chestnut's the play. I'm weary of going into my... Uh, okay, that's pretty bad. Um, 
because now Zygarde can go for subs on me and stuff like that. But I do have an extremely free Leech Seed here, which is nice. So, yeah, not good to have my, my chest not burned. Uh, but that's okay. I guess what else could I have gone into? I could have gone into Toad, but having Toad burned would have also been really bad. Uh, do I think this is Spadef? It, it probably is. Because uh, that's his best way of dealing with my Coco. So let's say he's Spadef. He's not a Salt Vest, we already know. And he did not show leftovers? Oops. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I changed my dimensions there for a second. Uh, yeah, so that's looking very non-offensive. Let's say, uh, he's Calm Nature versus, uh, okay, so I can, I, if I get him to, like, 60%, I'm in good shape to 2 a KO with Dazzling Gleam. And I miss the Leech Seed, which is always nice. Always, always nice. Um, he also has no Araquanid, which I just noticed, so that's, that's great. That's, uh, that's really nice. Hitting that leech seed would have been also really nice, um, but what are you gonna do? I mean, he's probably just gonna go for his rocks here, if I'm being honest. Um, so if he's going for rocks, what do I want to go for? I can't really hit him with uh, with that guy. I think going into Toad and going for uh, knockoff is a decent play, as long as he doesn't go for something weird like Grass Knot. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and click knockoff. Nothing really appreciates this on his team. I don't know what he's gonna go into. This thing it could very well be leftovers. It would have been nice to get that leaf seed. I keep complaining about that. But um Yeah, I mean I think any of my either of my rain sweepers have potential to go to town here. Armaldo, the only catch is that I have to hit some stone edges, like versus the Tornadus and versus the Rotom. How much does a uh, Rotom take from Armaldo? Uh, See, so yeah, a stone edge does a lot. <laughs> um, it's already in range, just with that U turn chip. Assuming that this is the spread. See, so yeah, let's just try and get a knockoff here. He also, this is crazy, he didn't bring a water resist. How did he not bring a water resist versus a team with Volcanion and, like, uh, rain? Like, I don't I don't know what people are doing versus me. Johnny last week didn't bring a water resist that wasn't Greninja. <laughs> um, but hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. So, let's see what he chooses to do here. He's just probably calking. Like, what is his Pokemon is best geared? So he goes into this thing. Let's knock this off. And we got rid of its life orb, so that's great. Um, it's nice to know that it is not uh, Scarf. So he has no way of taking out anything in the rain. I am weary of Grass Knot here. Uh, I think Togedomaru is the right play. Because Togedomaru is kind of only here for this Mon. Uh, and, and, and also Kangaskhan. Also Kangaskhan. Because hopefully he's not like a uh, an agility set or something like that. That could be pretty scary. Goes for U-turn and we get a bunch of chip damage. That is nice. If I get up rocks, this thing is going down. Uh, but if I were him, I would go into Zygarde here. I would go hard into Zygarde. That couldn't have worked out much better. U-turn with Life Orb is interesting. Yeah, so, I mean, he's got nothing for, for rain. I just need to, like, get up rocks, and I'm looking very nice. Um, so what does this thing got? I could just spiky shield. I guess he's gonna go for EQ. I mean, he could have something weird like Trick Room. That would be, that'd be a nice... Nice, uh, nice play, but what does he have to abuse it besides this Bronzong? Nothing, so it's more likely this is just sort of a standard defensive set. It's got like Gyro Ball, Earthquake, Toxic, maybe it's got Zen Headbutt. 
But either way, I don't think there's any reason not to go for Spiky Shield here. Just to scout what he wants to do. I'm wishing I had water coverage on Pelipper now, just because that would be so nice. Goes, does go for the Spiky Shield, and here comes the Earthquake. That is looking nice. Do I think that this thing has Zen Headbutt? I guess I don't care. Like, I can go Chestnut anyway. And then fire off that Leech Seed. Because a Zen Headbutt from an uninvested Bronzong is not going to do very much. Let's just quickly cancel. Go into uh, Chestnut. Go into Tank. And let's go into Bronzong. Sort of a standardish looking spread. Let's assume that he's got Zen. Zen does 33% max. I'm happy going into, into Chestnut here. Most likely he has uh, Gyro Ball and Toxic as his last two moves. So, what is his play? Like, he doesn't have a switch into Leaf Seed. Let's see what he does. Does he go for the EQ again? He goes for Rock Slide. This guy cannot touch me. So, yeah, let's go for Seed Bomb. Uh, not Seed Bomb, Leech Seed. The other Seed move. And uh, let's not miss this time, Chest. Not put your glasses on. We need you to come through here. But yeah, basically, like, I just need to get a kill or, you know, get something KO'd on my team. I go into Pelipper and then, like, my Rain Sweepers go in. I need uh, probably to get this to about 50% or so. Kangaskhan, I don't know if I need Kangaskhan Super Weekend for like Armaldo. Let's say uh, Kangaskhan, something like this. Uh, yep, dies to a superpower if it's got uh, no HP investment. If it's got HP investment, we kill it after rocks. So getting up rocks might be a priority just depending upon um, about what he's got there. How much does Sucker Punch do? A uh, decent bit. Does this include Parental Bond? It does include Parental Bond. Okay. So, he goes for Hidden Power. Maybe Hidden Power Ice? Not sure. Uh, could be Hidden Power Fire. That doesn't make a ton of sense. What is Hidden Power? Yeah, it must be Hidden Power Ice for... Uh, for freaking Salamence. The question is, do I want to go for Spiky Shield or do I want to go for another uh, Leech Seed? So now we've seen his whole move set. I don't think I like going for another. Hmm. I could go for Spiky Shield. Hmm. Could also go into like Pelipper and start to get a little momentum here. Yeah, it's a tough play. If he were to double, what would he most likely double into? I mean, probably not Sneasel, right? Uh, he just doesn't have a like a switch in here. I think he has to leave in the Bronzong. And try and, and wear me down. So I'm at least going to get one more turn. Okay, so he does switch out. So not great. But again, I don't think there's a lot that this thing can do to me. It's got Wisp, Volt Switch. Unless this also has Hidden Power Ice. Which it might. Uh, man, I really wish I had double le leech seated there. That would have been a nice play. Yeah, but like, Rotom just doesn't hurt me. Unless he's got HP flying. He's got Hex, which is definitely scary. Should have seen that one coming. Okay, so Zygarde's looking like a threat all of a sudden. That is for... that is for sure. So I just pretty much have to never give this thing an opportunity to set up, and then I'm looking nice. This thing does outspeed my 
Chestnut. So he has to have at least a little speed investment, because I hit 87 speed, his min is 86. So does he have more speed than Armaldo? Probably, because Armaldo only has uh, 92 speed. Does he have enough speed for Toad? Kind of think not. He hasn't shown an item yet. I'm a little worried that he's Colber. He does switch out this time into Bronzong. So if he's going to go for HP Ice again... Um, what can I do? He's got Earthquake, Rock Slide, Hidden Power, Ice. Rock Slide probably does a decent bit to Armaldo. I mean, do I just want to go for, like, Hammer Arm? Alright, what is his? He is Leftovers. I'm just gonna sack my, my guy. I'm a little sad that I played so recklessly with this Chestnut, but... Because I don't have a lot of defensive members on my team, this was always going to be extremely pressured. And because I just don't have, like, Water Stab on this team, <laughs> there's not a lot that I can do. Okay, so now that that is, is done, let's quick do a quick damage calc. Chestnut. We are burned. We are going up against Bronzong. So it has some fizz def investment. Is it fully fizz def? I don't think so. Um, I don't know. Maybe it is. Impish. Yeah, probably. If it's max, does it do that much? So it could be. It could be like max fizz def. In which case, Tapu Koko probably doesn't. Still doesn't one shot it. Yeah, nowhere close. I think my play is to go knock off again. Because, like, what else am I supposed to do? Uh, does 50%. Not bad, not bad. After we knock off his item, is he... So he can potentially... Depends on the rolls. Knockoff could 2 at KO. Sorry, I'm just thinking. Yeah, like, getting damage on this is really crucial. Like, there's really nothing that he can afford to switch into a knockoff here. I think, like, probably he has to stack Torn. And then go into, um, I don't know what. But if he goes into Rotom, I think it's 100% Colberberry. I'm not risking that. I guess we go Coco. Yeah, we never did mod join. Sad. Okay, so he's just going to go for EQ. So that does nothing. Um, Jake is a cool dude, at least. Hi, Matt. Alright, so... Did 57. Uh, knockoff still has a good shot to, to take this thing out. So... Let's hope that it doesn't survive. Sure, let's do mod join. So, yeah, if he sacks this thing, this puts me in a really good position to uh, sweep with Armaldo. Because then his only stone edge resist is Zygarde. So, 
he decides to go into Kang, which is totally fine with me. So now we go hard to go tomorrow. As long as he doesn't, uh, a drain punch would be bad. A drain punch would be extremely bad. But we still have a few ways to revenge kill Kangaskhan. He goes for Earthquake, which is not even a contact move. Nice prediction. Nice prediction. I think I'm just going to go into Pelper and click Hurricane. That's probably my best play, right? Uh, Pelipper. Uh, Kangaskhan. Maybe I should have just stayed in and uh, try to go for the attack. Um, so if I had Seismitoad, EQ might have killed. Uh, let's say Earthquake. Earthquake was going to kill, so that's fine. Nice prediction. But yeah, so... 73%. How much did we just say Pelipper does? It does that much. Uh, return does kill us. I could go into Armaldo. I think that that's a perfectly fine play. Because what can, what can Kangaskhan reasonably do to Armaldo? Seismic Toss is not a move that it gets, thankfully. Um, yeah, let's go in and Superpower. I could also go for Rocks. I kind of like Rocks. Uh, do do Thinking, thinking, thinking. This is a long battle already. I'll probably end up post comic this. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, but I think Armaldo is the play 100%. I don't want to go into Pelipper just yet because I don't want um, I don't want to lose my reign so soon. What is the Rotom at? Is that 75%? Yeah, I, I think I like rocks best. Stone Edge has a chance to kill. It is just nice because it kills the, the Tornadus on entry, does damage to Sneasel, just whittles his whole team. So he left it in. So I'm not very happy about that. Uh, now I have to sack this thing. Now I have to sack this thing. If I just clicked superpower, it would have been dead. Yeah, so I couldn't risk going into Pelipper there. Oh, this is really hard now. <laughs> um, this is really hard now. I think I just go into this. And I click Hurricane. Can't miss. He's got to have Pain Split on that Rotom. Hex, Pain Split, Will O Wisp, Volt Switch. This Kangaskhan is a menace. I don't think I'm going to be able to beat this because the Zygarde is there. Zygarde's kind of able to tank a hit from almost anything on the team. Should I go for U-turn and try and sack off Coco? How much does Tapu Coco take from Kang? Uh, probably a ton. Yeah, it dies after rocks. I think all I can do is try and put this thing in range. Ugh, if I had just clicked superpower, but I was expecting the Rotom to come in. 
but having the rocks is really nice. Having the rocks is really nice. Okay, let's see. I just I hate that I had to sack my whole team to this. I should have checked for the earthquake and not gone hard Toga tomorrow. I think earthquake was pretty obvious. Okay, so he sacks the bronze song, which I'm actually okay with. Because what can he go into now? He can go into Rotom. Rotom is his play. I go into Coco every time. On Rotom, even if he Volt Switches, I think that's okay. So yeah, there's three turns left. Uh, I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna keep my, um... I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna keep my, uh, my rain up. I might not have enough turns. He does go into this. Yeah, so I, I have to go Coco. I can't afford him Wisping. My Seismitoad. Seismitoad is how I win this game right now. Although, to be honest, I'm not sure if, uh, if Drain Punch kills the Kang. Uh, it's got a chance. It's gonna be a 61%. It's like 50-50. Yeah, I have to go Coco. And I'm sure he'll Volt Switch. It would be amazing if he goes for Wisp, actually. Wisp would be best case scenario. Because then that gives me it gives me another chance to uh, like it wastes another rain turn. That gets me closer to getting my Pelipper back in for potential rain sweep. With the toad. But if we assume that this is a Spadef Rotom, um Pelipper versus Rotom. That is this. 50. It's a calm nature. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't do hardly anything. Volt Switch, of course, kills. That's There's no doubt about that. So he does go for Volt Switch. So I'm okay, even if he wants to uh, go for... Uh, if he wants to kill my Coco, I'm totally fine with that. He is Roselli Berry. I kind of thought he would be. So he can DD. That's spooky. And uh, unfortunately, my rain runs out there, which is not ideal. So let's see. I'm going to go on a killing spree. Uh, ice Beam, not Hurricane. Ice Beam. Ice Beam 100%. <laughs> um, he did outspeed my Coco, and my Coco outspeeds my Pelipper, so he should be able to go for the... Um... Well, let's think about this. How much does Hurricane do uh, to Zygarde? Uh, offensive Dragon Dance. 50... No, so it doesn't kill. We have to Ice Beam. I do hope that he kills. Like, plus 1,000 arrows definitely kills. The reason that I'm hoping he kills is that I can potentially uh, then go for the Toad Sweep. It's going to be extremely, extremely close. I think I still have a chance. Because remember, the Torn is dead. He goes for Outrage. Okay. We can bring in this guy. We can go for Ice Punch. And we take him out. What does he do now? Sucker Punch actually might win him the game. That would be sad. 
We saw he has Return, Earthquake. There's no way he doesn't have Sucker Punch. There's no way he doesn't have Sucker Punch. Okay, he's going for Ice Shard. How much does Ice Shard do? I mean, it doesn't really matter. I don't have a play. Uh, if he's banned, it kills. Uh, drain Punch. Okay. This is actually looking nice. We might have even gotten ourselves out of uh, Sucker Punch range. Kangas Khan. Look for Sucker Punch. We did. We're out of Sucker Punch range. Did we just do this? Did we just mount the comeback of the century? We very well might have. If it's Cold Burberry Rotom, then no, we didn't. <laughs> um, I have Knock Off, Ice Punch, Drain Punch, and Poison Jab. I mean, Cold Rotom doesn't necessarily make sense, but I didn't see any other item. So... Uh, it doesn't matter, Cold still dies. No, it doesn't. Uh, it's at 63%, so yeah, it probably still dies to knockoff. His best play is to go into Rotom, uh, and then let make me take another round of Life Orb Recoil, and um, hopefully that, you know, hope that that puts him uh, in range of Sucker Punch. That's his best play. Actually, I think his overall best play is to like do something like go into Rotom and then sack off the Torn to waste a rain turn. Because then his um, his Kang will be able to outspeed my Seismitoad um, once the rain runs out. Most likely. Oof, this is tense. This is tense. Yeah, I, I think that's his best play. Like, he's just trying to plot out what he needs to do. Like, that's absolutely what I would do if I were him. Yeah, so he goes into Rotom. I mean, we can't do anything besides knock off. It doesn't matter. If he just sacks this off, then we do win. Well, potentially, just barring rolls and stuff. He sacks it. Alright, we get the W. It just depends on the Sucker Punch roll. I think he would have gone into Kang earlier if he had Sucker Punch. He kind of makes me think he doesn't have it. If we don't kill with Drain Punch, then... Um, he can potentially just go for a return on us. That would be very bad. He goes Torn, sacks it off. It doesn't waste a rain turn. So even if we lose, at least it's a 1-0. But I mean, I don't have a play besides this. He survives on two! No! No! Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. That's so crazy. Oh, man. Oh. I'm so sad. Oh, that was almost the most epic Seismitoad sweep of all time. Again, let's look at this roll. It was like 50-50. It was, that's so crazy. Ugh, it was a roll, I think. So, yeah, it was very, very close. Ah, oh, darn, we almost pulled that off. We almost freaking pulled that off. That would have been epic. But you win some, you lose some. I prepped for this in like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So the fact that it's a 
you know, I'll take that. I made a few misplays. I threw my chestnut around. Oh, yeah, so... Uh, uh, yeah, you... Yeah, roll highly in your favor. Haha. <laughs> okay, so based on that, we didn't really have a chance. Um, but I'm just glad that we were able to make it so close. Um... Is there anything I could have run other than that to, to make this closer? <laughs> totally spaced on Swift Swim. Yeah, no, lots of people do. But uh, Toad picking up three kills there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, which is pretty excellent. And uh, almost picking up that kill. That would have been so crazy. Ugh. Well, anyway. Oh, he's max speed to beat Zygarde. <laughs> uh, like max speed Scarf. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> That's potentially a thing. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. That was a nail-biter of a match. Um, if we had just played a little bit around this Kangaskhan, like not gotten up rocks, we could have been in a better position. But, you know, it is what it is. So thanks for watching. Make sure you check back to the channel for other gaming Pokemon content. And until the next time, I'll see you guys later.